Once, only a god could perform such a miracle. But today, mankind moves one step closer to the divine! In 2010, Xenoblade Chronicles was released in Japan and eventually it would receive critical acclaim from both critics and fans alike, calling it one of the best JRPGs of that generation. From there onwards, a franchise would be born with a sequel, a spin-off, a remaster, and even three fighters in Super Smash Bros. We are about to bear witness to the birth of a universe! So before I start the video, I want to say that this video has massive spoilers for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, so if you don't want to be spoiled, click off this video, or if you're fine with being spoiled, or if you've already finished this game, continue watching. Okay, let's get into the video. Is this Xenoblade? Looks like an RPG. Fighting in order to live? and living to fight. Is this the Oblique Chronicles X? That's the way of our world. I might be the new thing for Monolith. Ionios. <laughs> Tell me, what would possess oh, you to shit. side with them? Oh, We're fighting because there are enemies oh, here. Oh, I to believe you're him. Ever since the announcement trailer released in the February Nintendo Direct, I've been extremely excited for this game. At this point, this game was looking like the best Xenoblade Chronicles game yet. The art style was stylized like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but had more realistic body proportions, making the characters look even better than ever before. I was so excited that I screamed and my father had to check up on me to see if I was okay. I had finished Xenoblade Chronicles 2 last year, and I loved it so much and I wanted to see what the future held for the future of the two worlds. Currently, this had surpassed my expectations in every way, and even then, it fulfilled ideas and concepts that I had no idea that I would ever want. Xenoblade 3's battle themes are stuck in my head. So good, man. I love flutes! Let me buy them, Nintendo! A Xenoblade X reference? Xenoblade Chronicles 3, the world that you're going to explore is called Ionios, and it's the mashup of the worlds from Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and 2. The worlds from both of these games were already really exciting to explore, with beautiful set pieces like Satoru Marsh, Fallen Arm, Urea, and Tantal. And to see these elements reused for this game, it was looking amazing. One of the developers for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 that worked on this game mentioned that the areas for this game were five times as bigger than Xenoblade 2's Titans. And holy shit, he wasn't lying. The world of Ionios is one of my favorite areas of all of gaming to explore. And since there's no loading times in the regions themselves, it makes exploring that much better. Yeah, I get that feeling of X, of just exploring the world and the gameplay of it a lot more than the other two. The world has so much to explore, just like X did. Exploring is highly recommended because you will miss a lot if you don't. There's also more to do now compared to the previous games. There are camps around the world that allow you to clean clothes, have a discussion, use gems, and cook food. It's an evolution of Torner's camp system, and I love it. You can find different hero quests all throughout the story and through the world, and they feel so much more natural and story related than ever before. Some of these hero quests even tie into the main game and with party members, so it makes them feel that much better. If you go off the beaten path in the story, you'll find new hero quests, and that's awesome, and that's what makes exploration really good in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The stories that you find by choosing the hero quests are unique and amazing, and the heroes that you find, they're also really cool. Heroes like Ethel, Zeon, Isurit, and Grey, they're all so cool and unique, all with their own backstories, and with likable personalities. A new feature that can be found around Ionios is called Skirmishes. In skirmishes, you choose one of two sides to get a unique reward. 
This helps make the world feel more natural because there are bound to be animals fighting each other for food, resources, or for territory. Plus, these can help with leveling up classes and colony affinities. And coming from the viral sensation Fortnite are airdrops. Periodically, there will be an airdrop from either Keves or Agnes that gives you cool supplies. It helps the world feel more like it's actually in war. And thankfully, Secret Areas return, and they are beautiful and amazing. I won't show any here to, due to me being lazy, but please believe me. There's this one secret area in the Fornus region, and it actually reuses a secret area from Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and I almost felt nostalgic. A Xenoblade X reference? Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a standalone experience where you don't need to play the other games to enjoy this one, but I highly recommend you do, because otherwise you're giving yourself a disservice. Plus, the other games are really, really good with amazing stories. And if you're playing this without playing the others, then you're gonna lose a lot of references, especially with the party members that you play as. And when we first saw Mio, we all thought that she was Nia. Noah's sword looks really similar to the Monado, but evolved. And Lon's, of course, is a lot like Ryan from Gameplay Chronicles, but now Machina. Oh yeah, baby! Yuni's like a combination of Sharla, Melia, and Nia. Arts in the game are also taken from the previous two games, such as Shadow Eye, Ray of Punishment, Blossom Dance, and others. And how could I forget as Shara? By the way, the best here in the game, she's like, she's a descendant of Sharla, obviously, but she has the arts from Dumbman. And it's really cool to see these previous references, because I've been playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 again and again after I beat it. In the world itself, you'll notice so many references, and it's made me squeal so many times seeing a familiar line more. This is honestly a huge reason to play the previous two games. You won't understand or enjoy these references as much as if you haven't played these games before. It's amazing exploring the Arithian Sea and seeing landmarks from the past, seeing the Makana Sword, Urea, and landmarks from the Bayan Shoulder and others are a real treat. It's also just really interesting seeing these new areas remixed or just giving a new facelift. But Xenoblade 3, I think more than any other, really emphasizes you to analyze and look at previous scenes in a much different viewpoint, taking into account everything you know and putting together pieces based on all of the vague clues the game the game uh, throws out. If you've looked at anything from like Mixed Channel or anything like that, you'll see that there's a lot of little things that you can theorize about and even put together from, from hints on there. Come on, come on, come on! That's enough! You're just gonna break your hands! I don't care! They'll shatter every bone in my body! If that's what it takes! Just stop! Please! Neo! Are, are you okay? I really liked Xenoblade 3. The story was, well, what can I say? It was Xenotier as always. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 offers a robust story with an engaging opening to this game, similar to Xenoblade Chronicles on the original Wii. In fact, this game has a lot of similarities to the previous games. In the world of Ionios, there is a constant war between two nations. This by itself replicates the original Xenoblade Chronicles, since in Xenoblade Chronicles 1, it was the Mechonis versus the Bionis. Similar to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, the world of Ionios always has to worry about their future. It's not stable, and they have to fight in order to live. The story of Ouroboros freeing the world from his shackles is one of the most engaging stories in the franchise, even if it doesn't really develop a lot during the middle parts of the story. One of the best parts of any of the Xenoblade Chronicles games was the ending of Chapter 5. You know, I thought... Our lives were like our music, always in our hands, under our control. I wasn't facing the truth. Even if I could reach people, I wouldn't be able to save them. I 
should have known that. It's unbearable. Seeing life slip away from you. Even though they're right there. What am I even doing? I and probably many other players thought that Mio's story would be cut short and that she would be sent into a homecoming and that she would never be reincarnated ever again. I tried to hold out hope until the very end, but it was too late. Her homecoming was complete and she won't be reincarnated. Noah's voice actor Harry McIntyre had a fantastic performance here, and even at the beginning of this game, you could tell it was better than the entirety of Zoomplay Chronicles 2. His performance helped me to love the story even more, and to get me truly engrossed in the story of Aeolios. Getting back to the actual story, we had the best possible outcome. Mio had survived in Consul M's body. Does that mean? I then, the two of you. So, the one who died is. <gasps> this time, for real. What in the actual Xeno fuck? Holy shit, holy shit! Xenoblade Chronicle 3's story is so good because it respects your time by jumping straight into the action and by not bogging down the story at the beginning. It also doesn't mess with moments by taking a joke too far. A problem that many had with Xenoblade Chronicles 2's story is that people had issues with the light-hearted moments after a difficult battle or just it feeling out of place. Mithra is sleeping next to Rex by accident. And this not handled well at all. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 handles these moments much, much better. Characters talk about certain topics in the overworld or during cutscenes, and it makes these situations feel better without releasing the tension. The problem with Xenoblade Chronicles 1's combat is that it's easy to learn but not that fun to play with. The problem with Xenoblade Chronicles 2's gameplay is that it's hard to learn, but it's so much fun to play with. Naturally, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is hard to learn and not fun to play. Kidding aside, the gameplay in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the best in the franchise, and it's really, really good. Monolith Soft has done a fantastic job perfecting the gameplay and making it so much better. The combat is a mix of the previous game. It's mainly based off of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but depending on the country's class, your arts are going to recharge differently. Also like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you have a lot of different playstyles, but what makes them unique? Instead of blades, we now have heroes. And in my opinion, it's much better than the blade system. Each hero is unique with 5 arts and special skills that help out in the battle. In order to use arts on the D-pad, you have to equip a hero's class, and by breaking up a class, you earn their arts and skills. As much as I love Nia and Mio, I think my favorite Xenoblade cat person has to be Juniper. They're green, they're a nihilist, but most importantly, they're just cute. The only catch to this is that you can only set your master arts to be the opposite country of the current class. After arts of both countries are charged, you can fuse them together in order to form a powerful fusion art, and this is what raises your interlink level. Ouroboros is another key feature of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and we'll talk about that later. Something that I've been wanting ever since I played Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is the ability to freely change between party members during battle. And the amazing thing is, you don't have to wait to recharge at all, so if there's something specific you want to do in battle, you can do it yourself. The only downside to this is that if your AI companions already use some arts, those will still be recharging. The best part about this is that you don't have to stress about anything. If you want to stick to just one character in a fight, you can do that. Also, I forgot to mention there's not just four, not five, not six, but seven active party members on the field at all times. Seven. That is insane. 
and performance during battle feels on par or even better than Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And we all know how bad it got. This mechanic really helps me use all my party members during battle so I just... It's helpful making me appreciate all of them more. If there's one thing I had to complain about all of this is that I'm not a fan of the recharge system due to Kevis Arts refilling over time. It worked in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 due to you having 16 active arts at a time. Here it just makes combat feel a bit slower. The Ouroboros mechanic introduced in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is an extremely fun feature in battle that lets you use arts without needing to charge them, and plus these arts are really, really good. Ouroboros don't take damage during battle, instead have a heat gauge that rises over time. At the start of battles, your Ouroboros isn't going to be strong at all since that level 0. You're going to have to level it up using fusion arts. If you stick to level 0, your arts and attacks will be really weak. And if you go all... And if you go to level 3, you're going to get really powerful arts with new abilities, like breaking all the enemies or dazing all the enemies. Noah's Ouroboros gets a special talent art that activates when you're going to overheat, and you get this after Chapter 5's ending. In order to fully maximize your Ouroboros, you're going to have to visit your soul tree in the menu. This allows you to raise your Ouroboros stats, gain new abilities, arts, and even enhance your arts, making them even stronger. In Xenoblade Chronicles 3, chain attacks are the best thing ever due to it combining elements from the previous chain attacks we've seen before in Xenoblade Chronicles, and adding its own spin on the formula. From Xenoblade Chronicles 1, party members use their own arts to attack. From Future Connected, you choose a special attack at the beginning of a turn to do a special move. And from Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you can extend the turns and have Overkill, which is amazing for grinding. The way you extend turns this time is different from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Every party member has a different TP value at the beginning of each chain attack. And the way you extend the turns is that you have to get the TP meter to over 100%. The higher the TP meter is past 100%, the more party members you get back. This new mechanic makes chain attacks that much more better. Plus, the music for the chain attacks is amazing. Please fix the chain attack theme playing when it shouldn't. Please. Bundle is soft. Let us huggle it on and off, please. There are a lot of complaints surrounding Xenoblade Chronicles 2, mainly regarding quality of life issues, poor UI, and terrible, and terrible tutorials. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 had controlled tutorials on the fucking D-pad, and tutorials disappeared after viewing them once. The game didn't tell you anything, and I can, and I can understand why people found the game boring. Oh, and also Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was rushed, which is, which is evident. The voice acting is awkward at times, there wasn't a skip travel button at launch. Auto run returns as well, thankfully. And now you just have to click on the left analog stick, which works which works well most of the time, and it makes sense. The UI is improved, as you can see, with it improving the look, especially in the menus and in battle. It's stylized and it looks really good. You can also quickly change classes for all the party members, and the chibi characters for the classes are really, really cute. Other quality of life improvements in this game that make playing the game even better are collectibles with actual models, fighting in water, and a route that tells you exactly where to go. Not using it allows for more exploration, but sometimes it can be difficult knowing where to go. It's like Xenoblade Chronicle Definitive Edition's version, but improved and it makes sense story-wise. The villains for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 are incredibly disappointing. Except for console and NM, but we'll talk about them later. The main villain for this title is bland and uninteresting. The design is immaculate and beautiful, but Zed doesn't stand at all compared to Malos or even Zanza. Zed's more of a concept, but even then, Zed isn't developed at all, and the party members don't even meet him. As for the villains, I think a lot of them could have been condensed into a few recurring characters instead of all doing their own thing, but I do think there are more good ones than most people. Finally, my thoughts on Zed. I actually really liked him, and I didn't expect to see so many people bashing him when I went back online after beating the game. 
There are a few factors for this, but it was mainly because of him being a chess master villain, my favorite type of villain, on top of his design and his boss fight's length, which is something I'd wanted from Xenoblade for a while. I also really liked how a lot of his scenes contain what seemed to me to be references to Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. I'd say the most clear instance of this is the theater scene where N finally accepts the power of Mobius, which seems to call back to the Darth Plagueis scene from Revenge of the Sith. In addition to this, I also appreciated the Xenogears reference in his final phase. If you know, you know. Anyway, that's all from me. Malos is pure evil and will do anything to destroy the world he lives in. The difference is that he has a compelling backstory. Zed does not. Mobius and General weren't threatening at all in Doom Blade Chronicles 3. He always managed to beat them in the main story without any hitches, and their designs for the most part are just... goofy. The only Mobius that were interesting to me were D, N, and N. They all had very cool parts to the story and felt interesting. Oh, and also Trident was also cool as a Mobius that actually joined your party. Talking about N and M, they were fantastic. We learned during Mio's homecoming that N was a Noah that tried to rise up, but he failed. He lost everything. But Zed gave him a chance. The chance to become Mobius and to get back Mio. N is tyrannical. Even Noah admitted that given the circumstances, his path would have been the same. Hell, even I would have done the same if there was someone I loved that much. After a kiss that I got spoiled on, it's finally time. It's time for the worlds to merge. The song Monolith Soft uses here is fantastic and emotional. It might be my favorite in the series. I may have had a lot of issues in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, but this ending cutscene reminded me of my love for Xenoblade Chronicles. In my opinion, this was a fantastic way to cap off the saga. You can tell that all of these games were made with love and attention. They all tell their own stories, and even if there's some messy moments in each title. This will go down, at least in my opinion, as one of the best stories of all of gaming. After 20 years after the failed Xenogears, Tetsuya Takahashi has finally fulfilled his lifelong dream to tell the story of Perfect Works. I'm excited to see what the future of Xenoblade Chronicles holds, and what stories we can get in this new world, or in another universe. This isn't the end of Xenoblade Chronicles. This is the end of the Claw Saga. Today, we use our power to fell a god, and then seize our destiny! Why are you the masters, and we the slaves? These are our lives here! They're not some toys you can just play with! don't remember us at all. Fiora, listen! If nothing else, you must remember your family! That's Dunban over there! The world's never gonna change if that's all you got! Doing it for myself. If it helps put smiles on people's faces, helps them live their lives together, then that's my role in this world! We need to find a way forward within that world! Still, even if we're worlds apart, I swear I won't. I won't let go. Not ever. I'll always be with you. Our feelings forever interlinked. In this world, there are so many mingled desires. But do we? Does anyone have the right to choose? <laughs>